Kickbacks can happen on virtually any machine that has a spinning cutter, but we probably see more of them on router tables and table saws, and we'll look at those in this video. This block is from a kickback that I had on a table saw several years ago. I know what I did wrong then, so we're going to try and replicate that a little more safely in this video. I was trimming the side of this piece on my table saw without a riving knife or the blade guard installed, and as it went past the back end of the blade, it turned away from the fence, and all I heard was a bang, and all of this happened. Later in this video, you'll actually get to see what a kickback like that looks like, and how quickly it happens. You only think that you can react fast enough to get out of the way of something like this, and you'll see exactly why later in this video. Whenever we have a spinning cutter, we always move the wood against that rotation. That's what gives us control. On a router table, the wood moves from right to left, so we're working against the rotation of the bit. That interaction develops a constant pressure that we can control easily. If we move the wood from left to right on a router table, we're going with the rotation of the bit, and big things happen. I've had people describe these events as like they had a seizure and threw the wood off the table themselves. This is when you find out just how powerful our routers really are, and how quickly they can really mess up the edge of a board. And if you weren't using a good push device when this happens, you could have some really ugly looking fingers right now. I thought that the kickback I had years ago happened in part because the piece of wood was pretty short. But the reality is that it happened because I didn't use a riving knife or the blade guard. For this demonstration, I'm using a piece of wood that's quite a bit longer, and I'm going to set the blade so it's just above the wood like the manufacturer suggests. I'm going to take a light trim cut for this demonstration, but the width of the cut has nothing to do with whether you're going to have a kickback or not. It's how your machine set up and how you work the wood. On the first pass, when I get to the back of the blade, I'm going to turn the wood slightly into the blade and see if I can hold it there before we try to really push it in and get a kickback. I've had people tell me that they felt it starting to turn in and a kickback was coming and they held it, but I have my doubts. First from above in real time. When I get the board near the back of the blade, I'm just going to turn it just slightly and as soon as it grabbed it, I couldn't stop it. And you'll notice that my backstop is gone and so is the piece of wood. Now I'll slow it down a bunch and you can see how close my hand comes to the blade even though I was actually trying to pull it back towards me. I'll say it again, you only think that you can get out of the way of something like this. Now I'll watch it from closer up, again in real time. Just think about realizing something's going wrong and getting your hand out of here before it happens. You can't do it. Now look behind me where the wood went. I had set up my welding blanket to catch the wood, but the wood went in there, wrapped itself up in a blanket, and turned the whole thing over. I also expected the wood to go more off to the side, but that didn't happen either. I didn't cut this part of the video so you can see that I'm still looking for the push block that I had in my hand and the wood. There I found a push block that bounced off of this and came back to the table saw. I couldn't find the wood any place obvious when I started unwrapping it and found it inside. And right about here is where I realized that I might need some new shorts. Here's the chunk of wood and that semicircular cut that I was expecting didn't happen. This thing turned and then spit it right straight out the back of the saw. And this is where I really got scared. Look what happened to this push block. Until I saw this, I thought that I kept my hand well above the blade the whole time. And seeing this made it obvious to me that I got a lot closer than I thought to the blade. I unplugged the saw and spun the blade, thinking that it might be bent, but it looks pretty straight. But the blade deflected enough that it got into the side of this metal insert. So this blade's junk. I'll never use that one again. Now for the really scary bit of video. Watch my hand as this happens. Until I saw this video and slowed this piece down, I would have never thought that my hand got that close to the blade. But this proves just how stupid this was. There's people out there right now calling me an idiot, and boy are they right. So what do you suppose the chances are that I'll ever use a table saw without a splitter or blade guard on it? None. Even somebody dumb enough to think of making this video can see the light. And if you use a table saw without the blade guard or riving knife in it, you're an idiot too.